Hello, I'm Anna from Speechly. Speechly has a very powerful annotating language. It is called SAL, Speechly Annotating Language. In this tutorial, I will walk you through the features of this language using the flight booking application as an example. Let's create an application in the Speechly dashboard first and call it flight booking. And we will leave it empty. So, imagine that you have an application that allows you to book flights. Let's say you can choose the cities of departure and arrival, uh, the date, the travel class and maybe something else. What if this app had a voice-powered UI? The users could say something like, book me a flight from London to New York for tomorrow in a natural way. And uh, the good news is that you can use Special annotating language if you are not aware of all the features. Probably you already know that if we want to train a spoken language understanding model, we need some training data. In this configuration editor, you can simply add the phrases that are likely to be spoken by the users. Uh, let's say, book me a flight from London to New York for tomorrow. Yeah, and uh, the rule is that uh, we need to add an intent name for uh, e each of these examples. As you may know from the special documentation, an intent is uh, something that maps to some action in your application. So if you, if you have an action of booking, uh, this will be recognized by the uh, spoken language system and uh, yeah, probably yes. If you take a look at the Speechly documentation, you will learn more about the intents, but uh, let's just assume that an intent is something that maps to uh, a particular action in your flight booking app. And the rule is that we need to add uh, an intent name also here in the list of intents. And now we have only one intent, uh, but if your application has more than one action, so we can add more than one intent. For example, let's add uh, an intent clear. Uh, for example, clear the filter or reset everything. And we also need to add it here. All right. And uh, uh, actually, the actions, uh, the actions often have some parameters, and uh, these parameters we call entities. In your application, the actions may have their parameters, for example, like uh, from city to city, the date, and uh, here they are called entities. For example, London can be a from entity, New York is to entity, and tomorrow is sort of date. And uh, we annotate it in this way. All 
All right, and uh, we also need to add the entity names in the entity names list. Okay, uh, now that looks nice, but uh, the problem is, uh, in reality, you will have much more cities than we have here, and probably you, you will have a long list of the cities, and uh, it's just not very possible to uh, list all of them here in the examples. So, uh, one solution may be that we make uh, a list variable from the cities. For example, we will define a variable which is called city and we will list all the cities that our application have. Now we have only few cities included in the training examples and probably you may want to have more of them. So what we can do, we can uh, define a variable called city and include all of the cities that we want to have in our application. For example, okay, London, New York, Berlin, okay, what else, Helsinki, Amsterdam, Paris, Moscow, and so on. And what we do the next, we just include uh, those variables uh, in, in our templates. Yeah. So we just replace uh, the actual names of the cities with this variable and don't forget about the dollar sign. Yeah. And uh, actually you can define whatever you want in a variable. For example, you may define uh, some piece of text that is repeated frequently or a list of different carrier phrases. So if we look at our uh, examples, we have different carrier phrases like uh, book me a flight. So we can define a variable called carrier phrase. And list all of the possible uh, startings of the phrase Yeah, and uh, we use it in the templates as well. Let's look what else we can do. Sometimes uh, you have almost similar training examples like these two uh, and those examples differ by only few words that exist in one example and don't exist in the other one and uh, so you may combine uh, these examples and uh, uh, you can make these words optional so you use these curly brackets to make them optional and you can just remove this example yeah, uh, this basically means that uh, some of the users might say uh, the date or when they tell the request and uh, somebody don't say this. Uh, and for example, we can define please because somebody may say this also. And you even can include the optional parts in the variables so, oh, okay, 
uh, we can define this uh, me word as, a, as an optional word. Uh, this is just, uh, as somebody may say, book a flight, for example. Yes. And you might ask, what about dates? Uh, the users can say anything else but tomorrow and September 15th and what we should do. Should we mention all the dates like a list variable or what should we do? Uh, the easy way is that you just import the predefined speech variable. So you say speechly dot date and so uh, this variable includes different types of dates in different formats and uh, also such words as today tomorrow uh, like yeah and you replace it here also can get really powerful training data with only a couple of templates if you have defined variables. Uh, the actual training data will be generated from your templates uh, by replacing the variables with their meanings. And uh, you can create a really good configuration with only the, uh, those features that I have already mentioned. There are some more advanced features that I will tell about in the next video. Let's now deploy our model and see the current performance. And the training may take a while. Now the model is deployed and trained and we can try it in the playground. Book a flight from London to New York for tomorrow. Okay, and we see that we've got the transcription of our utterance and uh, an intent and the entities that were recognized correctly.